Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 258 of Category 5 Technology TV, White Wall Edition. 258 of them. 258. Wow. Yeah. Hey, kids. Nice to be here. How you doing, bud? I'm happy to be here. Glad to be alive. It's a good way to start the night. Good way to start the <laughs> night. Hey, you. Nice to have you here. And uh, welcome to the new Category 5.TV studio. Still in process. Still in process. He's got... Child things on all the doorknobs. I went upstairs that for a minute. Tough for you, I had eh? trouble getting through the door. Well, you know, what? I got two minutes, one minute. <laughs> He's still wrestling with the childproof door. <laughs> I said, "Well, there is a kitty door yeah. entrance you can get through there." Yeah, yeah. And just kind of yeah. crawl, fitting through that little yeah. kitty door. <laughs> That's a kitty door with T's, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah we don't have kitty yeah. doors. <laughs> Children's doors. It's like dwarf doors. This is for like yeah. very, very yeah. short people. And there you go. Very cool stuff. <laughs> oh, Robbie, Robbie. What's going on, man? Well, here I am. It's just yeah. another day in the sun. It's gorgeous here in uh, this lovely little town of ours. Has been pretty good. It's yeah. been, been all right. Yeah. So how about you? How, how was the move? How is the only here for part of We're it. here. The boxes are here. Everything's here. And now it's just getting through everything. I see a couple it's things been a haven't lot. been unpacked yet. Yeah, there's a couple <laughs> things. Yeah, look around. It's just yeah, we should, boxes. We should give them a panorama. Well, Can those of you watching on Backstage okay. Pass, uh, Scott was already saying, wow, don't envy you one bit, Robbie. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a ton of work to move, I tell you, folks. Did you ever find that box of beer? I, I found that. That was okay, at the top okay. of the pile. <laughs> you know, had I lost it, I would have just gone and picked up another one. Yeah, you can replace it. <laughs> They're replaceable, those, hey. yeah, yeah. You know. All right. Yeah. You know, and and uh, Chris Reich has just pointed out your hair is getting a little long. What's up with that? I know. Are you it's going been, for a new do or it's been what? one of those weeks. No, it's just when you're moving, it's it's insane how much work it is. It's like every waking hour, you just go, go, go. Uh, I made a mistake last week. I mentioned that, uh, that uh, Sasha was going to be starting this week. Ah. This is, you know, the the whole calendaring of uh, what, what's during this the move. E- equating me to eye candy. Well, this is uh, a tweet from Scott Evans, who uh, who joins us uh, on Twitter, VK Seven HSE, and says, uh, "Robbie, I thought you were having a new girl start out. That old guy just ain't going to cut it in the eye candy steak. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> wow. Ouch. Comes to us from Scott Evans on Twitter. Somebody told me my skunk looked like my skunk. My beard looked like a skunk. <laughs> My skunk looks like a beard. Yep. He, he just about made that slur. Yeah. Tonight we're going to be looking at Nopix. It's a live CD. Very excited about that because we love Linux here. We love open source we stuff. We love it. Yeah, we we truly do. Uh, but here's here's an opportunity to look at something that's a live CD. We're going to actually be installing it into our machine. Oh. I thought, hey, wouldn't it be fun Where's to take the Nopix? Machine? Well, oh, there. Okay. It, yeah, there okay. it is. There we go. Okay. There it is. It's covered Good in boxes, too. but it's there. <laughs> We're going to be installing it, which is kind of a weird thing to do with Nopix. We'll talk a little bit about it. It's a live CD specifically. We're going to be doing live some live CD. Neat. Can you define that? It's a CD that you boot from okay. without having to install Linux, and that's true. You can run Nopix without installing it, but we're going to have some fun tonight as a bit of a hobbyist kind of feature. We're going to be looking at installing Nopix, getting it working on your system fully encrypted so that, you know, if you stick it on a laptop, a virtual machine, a flash drive, and someone takes it from you, you're not going to lose it. Or you're not, they're not going to be able to access it, I should say. You won't have it anymore. You won't have it. <laughs> but of course, you'll have a backup, right? We've talked about that before. We've talked about it. Yeah, what do you got coming up in the news? Well, There's here's a what's lot coming cool up in the newsroom, kids. A new TV standard will offer 16 times sharper images than current HD TVs. Wow. Imagine Eric Kidd in 16 times the HD. You know, once, once I got we'll into to my see mid-40s, you know, started getting nasal hair, hairs in my yeah. ears, you don't want that kind of clarity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then all of a sudden Chris Reich is saying, oh, Robbie, your your yeah. nose hair is, uh, yeah. is growing in this month. <laughs> Start braiding those things. Yeah. Okay. An underwater wheelchair will allow wheelchair users to scuba dive. Really? That sounds pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. And Neil Armstrong has died at the age of 82. 
And a oh new dear. Atom-based computer is entirely self-contained in the keyboard. Hey. Right. So stick okay. around. These stories are coming up later in the show. I kind of like that kind of thing. Yeah, so it's all in here. It's kind of all in there. Yeah, just like that. Okay. Uh, tonight, uh, I'll, re- I'll just mention again, uh, you've heard me say it before, but we've got a mobile site. If you've got one of these mobile devices, a BlackBerry, an iPod, uh, an iPhone, a Android device, a tablet, whatever you've got. I should turn the sound off on this thing tonight. Yeah, that's a good I, I idea. Forgot. That's a good yeah. idea. M.cat5.tv. That's M.cat5.tv. All right. Well, we've got to take a quick break before we... A break already? Yeah. Well, before we get into your viewer questions... uh, This isn't even a union shop here. (laughs) (laughs) You can email us live at category5.tv. You see how I segued right back into what I was talking about. It's amazing how I'm able to do that with him. Uh, you can also join us in the chat room. Nice to see everybody there. I see uh, we've already made mention of Chris Reich and uh, a couple of the other people that are joining us, VK7HSE. Oh, old guy Jim's out there. Old guy Jim. Yeah, hey. We got... Uh, now, I, you know, when you when you have a name like Boo Mbb... I don't know how to say it. Boo Mbb... I think so, that's... Hey. Boo Mbp. Boo Mbp. Mbp. It's possible. It's possible. But then again, it's partially leet speak, so who really knows? Oh, Noodle right. Linux joining us again tonight. Jot, surprise! Or yacht? Oh no, no, you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <sighs> Dennis Kelly, hey you, Al. Is that you all or you Al? Yeah, we've been through this okay, before. I we know. had this argument. We had what? this discussion. I ended you up having up to break a bottle age. over your head. Yeah, I know. You forget things. Yeah, I remember discussing it. <laughs> So my son had my car last night. He plays bagpipes, and he was out to his bagpipes uh, yeah. rehearsal. And and he came in. I was on the phone. I said, hey, bud, how's it going? And he went up to his room, and about an hour later, I said, where the heck is Brandon? He's got my car. And he oh, said, no. you said hi to me when I came in. What's your problem, Dad? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, whoops. <laughs> Losing it, folks. Losing it, folks. Age By the end of the show, memory loss. I think at about uh, ten minutes to eight, I'm just going to say, "Welcome to Category Five TV," <laughs> and just see how far he'll go with and it. And I'll tell you what's Let's coming up in the newsroom again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good to see DJ Mike as well. Been a while since I've seen you in the chat room. Uh, you might have been there, but uh, uh, nice to see you. Good to see you. Nice to see everybody joining us. Well, cool. All right. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, we'll be right back. Uh, we're taking a break. Yeah, after this. <laughs> Take a break already. Quick messages. You? Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Pop some popcorn, but make sure you keep an ear on Category5.tv. We'll be right back. <laughs> At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com Are you in or near Barrie, Ontario or feel like making the journey? Meet the on-air crew of Category 5 Technology TV in person on Tuesday, September 25th as we celebrate five years of bringing you free technology TV. The live show will be held at Barry Free Methodist Church on Cundles Road East in Barry, and admission is absolutely free. There will be prizes during the show for those who attend, as well as a meet and greet following the live broadcast. Doors open at 6.30 p.m., and we hope to see you there. Don't miss this time of celebration with the on-air crew from Category 5 Technology TV, both past and present, Tuesday, September 25th at 6.30 p.m. For more details, visit Category5.tv. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. Nice to see you. Well, you know, it's nice to be here, too. Sorry, I'm responding to somebody who's uh, cranking about the, the, the bagpipes. And the <laughs> oh, they're going on about the bagpipes in the chat room already, are they? Actually, you know what? I All my kids play music of some description, whether it's a, an iPod or a piano or a set of drums, guitars, bass, pianos. they got a mu- musical father. It makes um, sense. Makes golly, and sense. you know, the day we got the drum kit and the kids started beating away on those, it was 
quite something. It was dramatic, you know. Even the mm. neighbors thought it was dramatic. Yeah, right, right. Um, but I got to tell you, nothing fills a house up more than a set of bagpipes. <sighs> a set of drums is loud. What do you call the little ones? The, the just the little chanter. Is that what it is? A chanter. Well, just the chanter, and that's you it's know, like you a Celtic instrument. It sounds similar to bagpipes, but it's a little sweeter, a little. Oh no! Quite a bit no, quieter. no, I'm just yeah. talking about the straight pipe that you can practice all the oh, fingering on. Okay, without the bag. Without the the bag uh, or the drums right, right, right. or anything. Okay, yeah. so what? But what is that instrument? The little or model of? There are a few different. Anybody types know of in the pipes. chat? I don't know. This yeah. is the, I don't know. All right. I just sound uneducated if I said, "Ah, it's the Highland pipes." Oh, you got the Celtic pipes. And just make it up. The, I wouldn't know and, the difference. And there's even but the rest some the pipes that, that uh, don't have the, uh, you know, they have a. A bladder that you don't actually have to blow up, uh, whether it's uh, mechanical. Oh, like filled. automatically, yeah. like one of those whoopee yeah. cushions that automatically fills Pretty itself. Pretty much like that. Those yeah. are amazing. It's about time they integrated the whoopee cushion technology into bagpipes. They have it started That's out fantastic. That way. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. If I go like this, <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> it works. Easy now. Uh, Easy now, bald nerd. Oh, dot com. <laughs> Oh. Get your questions into us live at category5.tv. Eric's watching for you. And join us in the chat room. Guest 3276. Hello. Good to see you. Ah. Also, guest 1614. Yeah, you know, you guys can name yourselves, yeah? You can, like, create a name. Jot will tell you all about it. I want to be Slagathor. Slagathor. Yeah. All right. I I vaguely think I, I read this one. Oh, yeah? This is uh, from Robert Grzynski. And oh, it's, uh, may I? You may. This is what happens when we just move and, and you, yeah, you're looking at the last time you're There you go. You're good. Sorry about that. I didn't set this up. I said, are you all set? I are you all set? I did set this up, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, I'm all set. I went through all your questions. But, it, oh, wait, these are the ones from two weeks ago. That's what I'm thinking. All right. That's exactly Take it away, I Eric. <laughs> I don't want to play with this guy anymore. I know. I'm no fun. No fun at all. Okay. We have a viewer question, but hey, Robert Gazinski, big shout out yeah, to you. Yeah, nice, anyway. nice to hear from it's you. Always nice to hear once from again him. this week, even if it was the same letter from a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <sighs> golly. Okay, so this is from uh, David uh, Tapia from Hallandale, Florida. Hey. Hey. Uh, yeah. Hope you're taking shelter down there. Apparently, Isaac is uh, making oh, landfall right. anytime yeah. now. I, I think it's heading closer to New Orleans, New Orleans than uh, actually yeah, down to the Panhandle. Kind of the same but, path as uh, Katrina. Uh, but it is the Gulf Coast. Uh, yeah, well, everybody take care. Tonight, I am gang. Hello, Robbie and gang. Love the show, but I hardly get to see it live. Mostly, I catch it in YouTube. I have a friend. I used to have a friend, too, that had an external USB heart hard drive and it died his house got hit by lightning and lost all major appliances Wait, so it, after replacing no, no, some fuses these are, these are the lyrics of a country song must be i could write it <laughs> can you sing it well we'll see i had an external usb hard drive and it died you gotta mispronounce things and all that. Oh, sorry you got a Go bad ahead. attitude i know i do you got a bad attitude and a bad haircut. It just sounded country to me. His house got hit by lightning. Uh, see? Lost all major appliances. So, after replacing some fuses, power supplies, etc., he found that the HD board was fried. Hmm. He took it out and saved it, but didn't save any info from the hardware, brand name, etc. Like the PCB? I actually took the PCB off of the, uh, the hard drive, maybe? I don't know, ask him. Hmm. Uh... <laughs> I wish that I had. I took his HD to see if I can access it, since I have one of those USB kits for external hard drives, but I can't. Is it possible to access it at all? Is it something I can do myself? Sending it to a company to have it recovered is out of the question. Please help. Thank you for taking Mm. the time. Ciao, ciao. Okay, well, for, and that's from David Tapia. First of all, this is an external hard drive. So, really, what what does a external hard drive consist of? It's an internal hard drive inside of a chassis. Right. So if the chassis got busted in the storm, which is quite often the case, like it, it could be like the surge took out the power supply or the, the PCB, the board in the external thing, but sometimes the hard drive is okay. If, however, the surge got through that and the hard drive itself got zapped, then you're likely looking at a bad PCB, which is that microchip board on the underside of your hard drive. If that's the case, then... It gets expensive at that point. It does. And you're not probably doing it yourself. 
not at all. And Reason being, I mean, and I've heard people say, oh, well, I've got an identical hard drive, and so I took the, ch- the chipboard off of that, and I put it on the other hard drive, and it wouldn't fire up. Well, you're actually going to cause a lot of damage doing that, because every hard drive, it, it, it's not just the, the model. If I've got a Seagate Barracuda, 7200.10, and I take a board off of one and put the board on another, it may not be from the same run. They may not have the same sector count. They may not have the exact same hard drive structure. The heads may be different. The internal components may be different. So you're actually going to potentially cause a lot of damage to the system if you do that. So you want to be very, very careful when you're, when you're swapping things around like that. Um, the, what I would try, it's probably, you know, it's going to be a, if it's a reasonably new external hard drive, it's going to be a standard SATA hard drive inside. Um, so I, I always keep on hand uh, a thermal take blacks which is extremely handy yeah, and you may not have this but I'm just I just want to tell you this because it's a really really good thing to have on hand I'm just gonna bring up a, a picture of one just so that you know what I'm talking about here go to thermal take USA.com like oh sorry. yeah well that's for the water 2.0 which we've also looked at ah. let's see there you go like one of those kind of things a blacks it supports 3.5 and 2.5 inch drives, and it goes USB, um, ESATA kind of thing. What's nice about them is that they support both the th- the three and a half inch full size hard drives and the oh, two and a half inch yeah. laptop hard drives. So if it's a laptop hard drive, you can still mount it, and it's easy, easy, easy. That something like that, or connecting it directly into the motherboard of your computer, will give you a chance to test the hard drive, so that you're ruling out the whole USB thing, because you're us- you're still trying to take it and put it into another external enclosure. Which, you know, who knows if that is the cause? I'd want to try the hard drive connected directly to the computer, and just make sure that uh, you know that it is the hard drive. But I think if at that point. If you connect it to your computer's SATA and your BIOS doesn't pick it up or you don't get access to the drive, um, then, you know, it could you could be looking at some physical, yeah, I mean, physical yeah, damage to the drive. If you take the drive and try it on, on an other external USB, mm-hmm. you, yeah. And, I would try you, it you internally. check and see where the, uh, the jumper is, too. You typically want that set to... Well, it probably is already set if it's in an al- yeah. already in an external enclosure. Well... Yeah, and these days, when we, SATA drives, it, it will work with the jumper in either position. Uh, that's just the speed, 3 gigabits versus 6 gigabits, or 1.5. So it's not going to really make a, a huge difference to that, I don't think. At least you'll be able to spin it up. But yeah. it depends on what the problem is, too. Like, is it clicking? Is it uh, just simply not being detected in the BIOS? If it is being detected in the BIOS, but not being readable in the operating system then you might try using a linux live cd or something like that and see if you can access it through that by mounting it uh, again just by installing it into your computer but you want to be very careful because if it's failing or if it has failed then you, the the more you do to it the more potential in- inability to recover it you create so, and then it boils down to sending it into data recovery, which is, you know, going to cost you know, if it's if it's hardware, you're looking probably at least a thousand bucks, you know, nine hundred to a thousand bucks, and then up from there if it's hardware, unfortunately. So, good luck. Hope you're able to find something. <coughs> cool. All right. How about another question? All right. Here's one from Drumwell. Hey, Drumwell. Okay. I'm new to Linux. Discovered mm. show about two weeks ago. Awesome. Welcome. On YouTube while searching for things Linux. Cool. Since then, I've been watching past and present episodes and was wondering how far back can I find show notes in the episode archives. Show mm. has a warm and friendly feel. It may, may it live long and prosper. <laughs> well, let's see. There, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Um, <laughs> yeah. At the show notes, I I think pretty much go back to basically the the front of season five. Uh, you can watch older episodes, but the notes themselves uh, need to be converted over, which is a, a huge, massive undertaking. And, and but there are some, but easy way for you to tell is just to go to our website category5.tv and you'll see let's see here we've got episode matrix 
and you can scroll down. So essentially it starts, I'm not sure if they're there for 195, yep. So basically if it shows all the information in the episode matrix, then you know that there are show notes for that episode. These ones here that are missing some information uh, are not going to have the show notes just yet at this point. They're coming. If there's a particular episode that you're looking for the show notes for, let us know. That'll nudge us to... Give him a break. He hasn't even got these boxes unpacked. I know. You know, it's just like all these <laughs> things. alone show notes. And, and I don't pay him well enough to get him to do it. <laughs> he's what I'm drinking he's tonight. It's brought water. brought that up on occasion. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ah. <sighs> Okay, here's one. Hey, Robert Grzynski. We missed you. Oh, hey, Robert. He's from Melbourne, Australia, mm. by the way. And look at this. I like this. What are we looking at? Hi, Robbie and Eric. Yeah, buddy. Well done. Yeah. And Spock. Well done, Robert. After watching the episode on storing strong passwords in a safe way, I decided to give X a try and really like it. One of the things I like about it is that it runs on multiple OSs. So mm -hmm. I'm using it on Zorin OS system in Windows 7 and on my Android phone and tablet. Though I do have a problem with it on Zorin OS, if you open KeyPassX and type in your password to unlock it to see your passwords, etc., it doesn't work. So to get around this, mm. I have to open the database file or database, as you prefer to say, which then launches the program, and it works. Not sure if this is a bug in the hmm. program. I'm using version 0 0.4.3 and not the version 2 alpha 2, which is the latest. I'm not right. sure if anyone else is having this problem. Maybe it's limited to Debian-based distros. I really enjoyed the first episode in your new studio, though you do need to add a background, perhaps change the wall that you had in the old studio to something else. Maybe Spock standing on planet Vulcan, perhaps. There you go. <laughs> Green screen it, and we'll just... There you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, Keep we're, up the great work. We're, again, we're... we're <laughs> pardon me. Wow, where'd that come from? Did you get we're, any on you? I, I got some on you. We're, work, we're working on it. We're working on it. Everything about the studio has to be unpacked, and that includes the backdrops. So, we're getting there. Thanks sure. for your for your comments and questions. And looking forward to having this fully set up for you, too. But I've got this crazy commitment that even during times of transition and extreme amounts of work, we're going to have a show. We're going to have a Every show. Every Tuesday. 258 episodes. Five years of this stuff without missing one. That's the kind of commitment that you got from us here. So... <laughs> You're going to have to, you know, uh, you don't have a backdrop. What's going on, you guys? Last week, I got and, quite and a few you know, emails. you have got a poor old schlock like me. Oh, you know what? <clears throat> oh. Sasha's not coming in this week. It's the week after. Can you show up? So here I am. <laughs> I was an afterthought. That's exactly how it went down, yeah. No, can you fill in? I got my schedules all mixed up. No, but... It, 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 last week, I got the comments about the Listen, camera. Listen, I've called everybody else in my date book. <laughs> <laughs> Will you come over? <laughs> it didn't go like that. It was pretty yeah, much I like that. I didn't call anyone else because I knew Hillary just got married on Saturday. Congratulations. So she wasn't available. I knew Krista couldn't come because she was here last week. And that wouldn't be fair. Hillary. So you're you're really just the only person I could call. And once and again, you, you pulled in, through. You criticized the beard. I did not. That was Chris. Oh, yeah, right. Just okay. mispronounce something for him. He'll be quiet for a while. Oh, I could. Yeah. I, I could mispronounce all kinds of things. Yeah. I'll, I'll work on that. I'll come up with something spectacular. I believe we were in the middle of a question about key pass X. Oh, I was moving on to the next one. You were already I, ready I read for the it? question. You just you didn't just give a very good answer in a very. I didn't even talk about manner. it yet. I said I've I know, got the I same thing. I think you really thing. should pay I mean, attention to the show and get at it. All right, let's get at it's it. It's the hair. It's Sorry, the hair, folks. isn't it? That's what okay. it is. Robbie, we have a question regarding. Uh, all right, so there's key pass X. <laughs> I haven't seen that problem. Let's create a quick database. Or database. Sure. All right, let's try it. So you're saying you, you create it. Whatever. Good name. And then when you open KeyPassX, you're having to... Now, see, remember that I've set it to automatically stay loaded so that I don't have to ever, right? Because those are the settings that we went through on the show, and, and I explained why we wanted to do that. 
back on that episode. So what happens if I actually quit and then load it again? Ah, enter my master key. Cool. So that's the, that's the expected behavior because in my settings, I have asked it to, um, to require a password once it's been closed or, or gone to sleep. Uh, and I've also set it to start locked. Start minimize, start locked. So maybe you've gone through those same settings and you just haven't made that correlation. Lock workspace when minimizing the main window. Lock database after inactivity. What it means to lock the database, this is a good idea because this contains all your passwords and they're available in plain text if somebody has access to this database. Remember, it's an encrypted database. So by setting it to lock itself, by setting it to automatically require a password in order to reopen, that's the expected behavior with these settings because if I walk away from my computer and I'm not at my computer for a half hour and then the phone rings and I get carried away doing something and then I have to get in the van and run downtown and then someone breaks into my house and they've got access to my laptop, they take it home and you know it's still powered on and they plug it in and oh look I've got his banking information I've got his everything yeah you know it's like you should probably have your Facebook set to lock after <coughs> 30 seconds of inactivity can you can you my, actually my, do my, that in Facebook <laughs> one of my one of my Clear sons sons friends uh, mums uh, is always leaving her thing home. I said, you got to put a password, and you got to log off mm. when you walk away from the computer because she's continuously posting stuff like, whoops, I pooped in the dryer. I'm going to have to do the load again. And she realizes her kids have gone and uh, oh. <laughs> played with her Facebook account. Yes. Brilliant. It's, it's, it's great fun. Yes. Brilliant. Yes. So Yeah, I've heard some stories. Um, you know. there, there's worse stuff than that, but I thought, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to behave. My, I said I was going to try to behave tonight. So uh, with KeyPass X, it's a good idea to have it set up that way. If that's, the, if that's the nature of the problem that you're experiencing, the problem, it's actually a good thing that is prompting you for a password every time. Okay. Okay. I hope that helps. Eric, it is time to hit the news. Have you got many more questions coming through? I've, I guess you've got a... I've got a couple more questions here. Sure. Okay. Well, do you let's, want to do that or do you want to do news? Let's talk about the news first. We'll see how much time we have, and then we're going to come back to your viewer questions. Uh, email us live at category5.tv or join us in the chat room. We'd love to see you there. It is Category 5 on Freenode, or simply visit the chat room on our website, category5.tv. Eric... Take it away, my friend. Well, here are the top stories from the Category5.tv newsroom tonight. A new high-resolution television format has been approved by the UN's Communications Standards Setting Agency. Broadcasts in 8K will offer a resolution of 7,680 by 4,320 pixels, roughly the equivalent of a 32-megapixel photo. That is some sharp. Yeah. Ah, uh, that is 16 times as sharp as current HD TVs offering about 2 megapixel resolutions. Japanese broadcaster NHK has developed three cameras that can capture the higher resolution, which it calls super high vision, at 60 frames per second, but aims to double that to 120 frames per second. By contrast, the BBC currently broadcasts HD TV programs at 25 frames per second. Unreal. I wonder what that's going to do to the price of TVs, though, if that actually, I mean, it's been an approved standard. So, yeah, what one happens of the things, with your old uh, yeah, I know, HD it's like, TV? Oh, you know. It's going to go the way of my CRT and my VHS yeah. and my DVD. But right now, the sweet point in televisions is the simple fact that they are really low resolution. You don't realize, because of the, the way they're designed, they look good. Eight, they look HD, even though they've got a really poor resolution when it comes down to the actual dots per inch. So that's why a computer screen yeah. typically looks better. But I wonder what that's going to do. Because now, all of a sudden, okay, well, I could take a 52-inch TV, and it's actually better resolution than my computer screen. It's the opposite of what we have going on right now. I wonder what that's going to do to pricing. Yeah, and what about the bandwidth to deliver that? Oh, boy. That's the other question, too. Yeah. Because everything's going IP-based. Mm -hmm. I was talking to, uh, to a friend today about the fact that even cable TV is going IP-based. Oh, really? Yeah. They're just switching everything over to their internet service through the coaxial cable. So you're getting your digital cable signal on an IP-based network. Hmm. So what's gonna ha yeah? What's gonna happen if you're? We don't know the answer to that one, folks. They're gonna have to create. They're gonna bring back laser discs. <laughs> oh, biggins! Except they're gonna be Blu-ray. 
There'll be Laserdisc Blu-ray, double-sided, <laughs> for the special features. Wouldn't that be amazing? Oh, Robbie, it's Robbie. got two hours of video, but it is in 8K. Wow. Fantastic. Artist Sue Austin is preparing to show off a prototype self-propelled underwater wheelchair to the public. So I'm trying to figure out this. Hmm. You know, you get self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. What is this self-propelled? This is boo. Well, anyway, Ms. Austin, <laughs> who has been a wheelchair user since 1996, developed the chair with help from dive experts and academics. The model is powered by two dive propulsion vehicles and steered with a bespoke fin and foot-operated acrylic strip. Oh, so that's what the things on her feet are. Okay. I was trying to make sense of that. It looks like the, the, that it's detached between her two feet, and they're almost like rudders. Okay, so okay. this is... She looks like she's having a good time, folks. Yeah. But you are going to require some foot movement then, so this isn't perhaps for everybody. Yeah, you're exactly right. Okay. Um, because, you know, if you are if you have no ability to use your, your lower body, then what... If that's how you're steering, then what, yeah. what would you do? But also, like, I don't Once know... Once again, we don't know the answers to this. <laughs> If, are, are any of you in a wheelchair that I personally, I would think that if I were to scuba dive and I had no use of my lower body, for example, that I might want to get out of the wheelchair because there's that sense of the freedom of not having gravity when you're underwater that, you know, that maybe would be freeing. To be able to get out of the chair. It's an interesting concept. Certainly, certainly. What do you think? She uh, is staging a performance with it in a swimming pool in Weymouth, or Weymouth, hmm. Weymouth, this week. Okay. Okay. And um, interested to hear from our viewers on that, especially if you are or a loved one are in a wheelchair. All right. So Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon as commander of the Apollo 11 mission, has died at age 82. Armstrong became the first human to set foot on the moon on July 20th, 1969. See? It was <clears throat> QED. Okay. Um, the, the I guess 68. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I remember looking up at the moon that day, that night. Oh, right. Yes. Yes, that's right. Because wow. you were alive at that time. I was time. alive at that point. I was not you were, conceived. You were, I'm you sorry. You were like seven years away, weren't you? Oh, more than that. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. Okay, the Twitter <laughs> feed of NBC Nightly News said he died at 2.45 p.m. Eastern on Saturday and that he'd suffered from complications from a heart surgery he went, underwent earlier this month. Oh. Now. There was another. There was another. There, NBC there? apparently were the first to report this, but their website, I think uh, the folks in quality control may perhaps have missed a couple of things. They reported that. Astronaut Neil Young had passed away at the age of 82. Really? Yes, from complications. Wow. Of a from heart surgery head in uh, 1969, which, as I said, that's the year he landed on the moon. So, anyway, Neil Young is alive and well and still rocking in the free world. So, <laughs> <laughs> ah, with ever shrinking right. computer peripherals, <laughs> we're seeing some really cool devices these days along the lines of Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. Pi. Raspberry Pi. Pi. Yeah. You Drink. know, I, 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 thought it was, I thought it was a private investigator. But now fans <laughs> of the old Commodore computers can start to get excited, too. Yes. A recently uncovered device from Diablo Tech puts the 1.8 gigahertz dual core Intel Atom processor and 2 gigabytes RAM and a 500 gigabyte hard drive into the body of a keyboard. Not only does it look pretty much like a normal computer keyboard, but what's also exciting about this is that it's priced at only $239 on Amazon and is powered by nice. Ubuntu Linux. Fantastic. So now when you spill your coffee on your keyboard, you're really not happy. Yeah, I guess so, eh? I wonder yeah. if they take that kind of thing into account. Well, mm. I mean, you have kid-proof... Uh, but it's only 239 bucks. But what? But, yeah. but what are your data worth? Well, you'd have a backup, of course. Of course, what would you, you use would. that for? What would you use that for? What that type of device? I wonder what the practical well, use. It takes for that up would. a whole lot less real estate. I guess you know what? Well, it's an what? Atom One Point Eight. Well, we, we still need a monitor. <laughs> yeah, you still need a monitor, but no tower. No, no nothing tower. sitting on the floor. No. But it would mean more cables going to your keyboard, right? Perhaps. You, Maybe you have your monitor. 
No, it's no, actually it's not, got okay. D sub output for the okay. video. It's got you know your power input and all that kind of stuff. So it's standard PC basically. But to think of 1.8 gigahertz sitting on your desk and that's it, you could buy. Think of it this way: it's the kind of the price of buying a terminal. Yeah, like a like a Weiss terminal or something like that. It's wow. probably cheaper than I used that. To deal with those at the TV station. But you think about yeah. the fact that this is not a terminal. This is not reliant on a big expensive server. This no, is just so you've a box. Got the processing that going you can buy ten of them right for your there. business, and you know, perfect for business applications yeah. based on Ubuntu Linux. That's cool. That is cool. Good way to get people involved in uh, or testing trying Linux. Maybe they should send us one to play with. <clears throat> Maybe they should. Yes, we should have that on the show. Have you got that, folks? Send us one. We'll play with it. I like, right the, here. I like the way he thinks. <laughs> you can get the full stories at Category5.tv slash newsroom. The Category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at Category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Eric Kidd. Thank you, Eric. Get your free Netflix pass for one month. Cat5.tv slash Netflix. You're going to get all you can watch movies and television shows at Cat5.tv slash Netflix. Absolutely free for an entire month. Category 5 tonight is brought to you in part by Quarterly Electric. They are the official electrical company of Category 5 Technology TV. Find out their uh, information right there on your screen or visit QuarterlyElectric.com. I encourage you to check them out. Did they get over and uh, help out with the wiring in the Did new they ever? studio? Well, awesome. we wouldn't we wouldn't be online. Excellent. If it weren't for that. Okay. Well, yes. That's good to know. So they are fantastic, and they got us up and running actually just before the the last show, oh, yeah? which was crazy. I know because you know we were literally getting ready to go live, and they their Five, electricians were four. here. <laughs> Very considerate though. I mean, he understood that you know I had my stuff that I had to do, and so he he got w- done what needed to be done, oh. and uh, did a fantastic job did you know really nice wiring uh made sure you know was nice cosmetically as well as yeah. you know did did the job that we needed done so very cool looking good yeah well i would like to look at nopix because 7.0.4 just came out um really you know it's always exciting to see the progress of of something like nopix um it's been a long time coming because it's a you know kind of an independent project but it is a very cool project you've probably used it for recovering computers and stuff have you used nopix before it's like the de facto linux boot cd i have played i'm not sure if i played with that no no okay well i'm going to encourage you tonight eric and you at home to give a look at nopix we're going to actually bring up their website we're going to take a look here see what we can do okay it's spelt uh, kind of like k Nopix. Eh. There it is, Nopix.org. Okay. By default, it's coming up in German. So up in the top right-hand side, for me, because I, I'm unable to read German, I'm going to switch to the English version. Also, you'll see that there is a way to translate it up at the top. So it does a fairly good job of translating it into English for me. I'm going to download it. Just by clicking on the download icon, I'm going to choose the DVD version. The DVD version, basically, it's amazing the type of compression that they're able to use. That the the gentleman who runs the Nopix project, what he's able to do as far as compression goes on a DVD or a CD. The DVD is actually, I think, like nine gigabytes, but the download is only three point something, really? and it fits on a four point seven gig disc. He's basically using a technology that allows Linux to compress things in such a way that it just loads it like it was a hard drive. Wow. It's very interesting. I don't, I don't pretend to grasp how it works, but uh, very cool stuff. So, so the DVD version, in fact, includes a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to get it off of an FTP. Just choose one here, but basically FTP DVD. I'm just going to take you to their agreement experimental software use at your own risk except okay so here's the list of different files and you'll see that there is the de version and the en version so all those different versions yes somebody's new to this they show up at this exactly what are they going to grab robbie this is why we are here folks we're going to help you find out 
what you're going to download. I remember being a little overwhelmed when I was first getting into Linux about, okay, well, here's a big directory. What am I supposed to download? So we understand what each file type is. That's where we start. This is an ISO file. So that is an, a, a DVD image. It is basically a downloadable version of a DVD. This is an MD5 file of the ISO. So this is basically a text file that tells me the MD5 checksum of that ISO file, as well as this, same thing. Uh, this is a SHA-1 file, which is encryption. So we can basically ignore all of these, MD5, md5.ase, dot sha1 dot sha1 dot asc let's ignore those and only go for the iso because okay, so the iso is our actual download so is de german like yes Deutsch? Okay, yes so that would be the language specification okay. so i'm looking for the english version um so that would make it easier to follow it would for, make it for easier us. for me yeah for you you might like the german version absolutely i know we have a lot of fantastic viewers joining us from germany right now which is awesome thanks for right. joining us interesting side fact that just reminded me we just introduced remember we just introduced access to category five in china oh right china is you guys are incredible they are our third top viewing country out of everybody in the world and they've only been able to watch the show for a very short time so welcome to everyone who's watching in china it just it blows my mind that you know after so five years of broadcasting the show all of a sudden, you know, we introduce it to China, and it is just booming Sweet. in China. We're getting a lot of viewership there. So thank you for watching the show. And please continue to spread the word. Okay, so we're going to go with the ISO file. Whoops. Oh, uh, Dennis yeah, Kelly, that? and I like Dennis. Yeah, I like He suggested we guy. pick the Canadian version because it comes <laughs> with beer and hockey. Fantastic. <laughs> they changed the, uh, the interface yeah. entirely. So the, uh, the icons are all hockey pucks. Okay, so I want the... Basically, okay, here's 7.0.3. I want 7.0.4. Do you see where I'm looking here? Read the file name. Nopix. V7.0.3, right? Means it's version 7.0.3. It's the DVD copy. There's the release date, and it's German. So if I scroll down a little bit, I'm going to start to see 7.0.4 DVD. There's the release date, which is just the 20th, which is eight days ago. And the German version. There's the English version, okay? So there we are. So what I want to do is, in fact, download that file by right-clicking on it and go Save Link As, and I'm going to actually save that to my desktop. Now, I've already gone to the to the effort of downloading it because I knew that we would be pressed for time tonight. Through the magic of television, ladies Through and gentlemen, the magic these cookies are already cooked. Oh, yes. Not. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Isn't it amazing? So I'm going to bring up VirtualBox because VirtualBox is an amazing, incredible way for us to try new things and get to have fun with Linux and, and everything else. I'm going to create a, a new virtual machine here. So we're going to just call this Nopix Tester. And why don't we create a version in Mandarin since we have so many viewers in China now? That, that is not up to us. Oh, well, no, I'm just do the... Okay. Oh, do you mean the show? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll translate. Remember how I was saying that I'm pretty good at English, but that's about it? Yeah, okay. That's that's just my failing. That's not anyone else's problem. But we'll, I'll, I'll I'll do what we can. And maybe we've been, maybe we've been uh, at that. you could get uh, your your young sister-in-law to help translate for you. There you go. Yeah. That'd be pretty awesome. That'd yeah. be awesome. Good job for Rachel. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're gonna go with okay Nopix tester. We've call, uh, said that it's Linux, and we're gonna go with Debian because it is in fact based on Debian. Okay, so we're gonna go next. Set how much RAM you want. Default is fine. Create a new hard disk because remember we're going to install this onto that what hard disk. Those choices back there. Well, yeah, I'm just hitting next, right? Do you virtual what kind box, of virtual file? Virtual machine. Virtual Defaults are hard fine. Oh. Dynamically allocated. We're going to do because it's going to take up less space and it's going to grow as we need it. How big do you want it to be? Eight gigs is fine. Create the hard drive. Create the system. Right click on it and go settings. And we're going to go. Storage. We're going to highlight the CD, and we're going to actually load our Nopix CD. Now, you'll see that I, in fact, downloaded the 7.0.3. That was now by accident. I should have done 7.0.4. Do you have to click Live CD, or is it just... Oh, no, no. you're going to actually install it. No, but that's, that's fine uh, to leave that unchecked. Um, and what I've actually done is gone choose a virtual CD disk image and grabbed it from my desktop. And unfortunately, I see that I grabbed 7.0.3, which is kind of silly of me. 
but it happens. Okay, so go through your settings. Network, we're going to change from NAT to bridged. All right, that's going to give you network access and bi-directional stuff. Very good idea. Display, turn on 3D acceleration. That's going to give you things like comp is. Bring your uh, video memory way up if, you, if your system supports it. Maximum is 128, so that's what I'm going to go with. I have five gigs of RAM on my video card, so I'm good to go. So now I'm going to double click on that machine. And in VirtualBox, it's going to actually boot from the Nopix 7.0 CD. 7.0.3. Pretend, yes, pretend that it's 7.0.4, because that's the one you're going to download. Keep in mind. All right. So once this boots up, we're, th this is a live CD. So this gives us access to Linux without having to install it. Very cool thing about Linux is that you're able to do this. You can use this to recover a computer that is broken. If you've got a computer with... If you've dropped it off the back of your... Not like truck? that. Okay. But let's say Windows crashes. You're, you're on a Windows system, which tends... You know, it can happen. Your boot record gets corrupted, and you can't boot your system anymore. But you want to recover the files, and then you'll reinstall. So you use something like Nopix to mount the hard drive, and then you're able to, um, you know, basically load the system and put your files back. So... Once we've booted up here, you see it's pretty quick. I'm just going to click on the Nopix icon on the desktop, go to Applications, and then go to Nopix, and you'll see one. Now, there is one called HD Install. We're going to avoid that, and we're going to actually pretend that we're installing on a flash disk. I'm going to highlight my hard disk, which is a VirtualBox virtual hard drive, and hit OK. It says it does not contain a FAT32 partition. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And it's going so to actually partition out one? that drive. It's going to create that partition right. for me, which is to section out the Pi and make it so that Nopix can install onto that. And we're telling it that it's a flash disk. This is going to give us the opportunity to create that system that has a fully encrypted file system. So everything that we save is encrypted within a single file, and we can back up that file and move it from system to system. Oh, wow. Very cool stuff. So that is going to go through this process. It's pretty straightforward, very, very easy, and it's going to actually boot up that system. Now, I have, I've taken the liberty to install that just so that we can save a little bit of time tonight. Once again, through the magic of television. Through the magic of television. And notice that this time around, I'm actually explaining to Eric why I'm about to shut it off, because he's learning about the magic of television. It's, com it's coming about. <laughs> there it goes. I mean, it's working great. Okay? So let's boot up the actual virtual machine that I've created here. And this one is fully finished, ready to go. I hit enter there to... Also to version 7. Point, I know. Point Crazy, three. right? But pretend. Pretend. Ladies and gentlemen, pretend. It's cool what happens here because Nopix actually allows you to password protect that file during the installation process. I'll, I'll jump back real quick to the, uh, to the installer just in case it's prompting me for that. It will actually ask you, hey, do you want to encrypt your data storage file? And you just say, yeah, and just enter your password. It's good to go. So in this case, I use demo123. And if I jump back, it looks like that's going to take a few minutes. So I'm just going to actually jump back to my completed system. And one of the things that you see here is during the boot up process, it says, OK, here's the file nopix-data.aes and it's saying, hey, well, what's your password? I'm going to enter it in. It does not allow the system to boot until you enter that password correctly. Hit enter and it's actually going to start booting that system. If you really remembered the password. If I remember the password. Demo123. Uh -oh. Pretty straightforward. Yacht's going to remember your password now. Yeah. It's, Use that's that on great. Everything. 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 All my online banking is using Demo123. Of course. Of course. Nobody would ever guess. They'd think, no way that Robbie would do that. Back in my installing screen, you can see here's the question. It's going to create an overlay file for storing data permanently. If you want this, please enter the desired amount. And because I've made this hard drive, it's going to create it at four, four gigs. Fine. And that's where you hit OK. And that, during the installation procedure, is where you're actually going to be able to encrypt that file, too, because that's the next question. So now, Do back... by overlay file? Overlay file is like the file that stores... Because remember, it thinks that it's a, it's a flash drive. So right. it creates a okay. file that now, if I open office and create 
an office file, where does it save that to? So it, cre it saves that in the overlay file as if oh, it were okay. actually um, a, a hard drive. Okay. Right? Okay, so this system is now booted. This is my new Nopix installed, basically a flash drive version on a virtual hard drive. You'll see that effectively, and, and this is exactly what is on the flash drive, or on the uh, bootable CD, DVD. So you see that there is a ton of stuff here. It comes pretty chock full. Uh, it looks to me as though they've really put an effort into games. There are a ton there. It would appear. It's a good opportunity for you to play around with Linux and, and see what it's like. I do like that you know, stuff is up to date on Nopix 7.0.3 in this case, but also 0.4, of course. 0.4 has got uh, an even more up-to-date system. And that's the one that uh, that you want to download. You'll see that GIMP is 2.8, for the example. The GNU Image Manipulation Program. Yeah. And it runs pretty good. I mean, it runs very good. Well. Very well. Sorry. Comes with anything that you need, it's like good, wine. Though. Yeah, it, it is, is good. It's exceptional. There we go. Oh. So that's what Nopix looks like out of the box installed on my computer. Let's say we want to step things up. Okay, now we're experimenting with Linux. Now this, keep in mind, we're, what we're doing tonight is kind of hobbyist, is what I'm calling it. Because you probably don't want to do this if this is your first experience with Linux, but it's fun. It's a cool opportunity for you to try a different distro, and obviously very, very easy to set up, and runs really good. What? It runs really well, Robbie. Okay, um, but, but well, I, but goodness. I was wondering... <laughs> Hey, the thing at Vulcan neck punch. Nopix oh. is designed to be a boot CD to recover hardware, to recover from a broken system, or to be, be able to good. boot up a, an old system. So it's fantastic at detecting your hardware. What about um, resources? How? It's Linux, right? It is Linux with stuff okay, so. on top of it. Now it's not. It, it's compressed. So you, like I say, you've got. I your, know, but what's the minimum? Hold? processor or amount of RAM oh on, your, on your box are you going to require for this to actually be helpful? Well, if you're doing it as a virtual box installation, then you've got to meet the minimum requirements of creating a virtual machine, which is to okay. say you have to have twice as much resources as you're allocating to the, uh, to the virtual machine, okay. at least. Otherwise, you're going to start affecting performance. If you're going to install it as a base system on a computer, which you can do, recover an old computer and make it run Linux. Here's a fun kind of way to do it. It's got a lot of a lot of stuff out of the box. Those in the note will say, yeah, but it's running on FAT32. Yes, it is. Um, you can do a hard drive install if you want to run it on Reezer FS, for example. In this case, we're doing it a little bit differently just because we want to have some fun with it. I want to kind of make this feel a little bit more sleek, we'll say. So I'm going to go to the Nopix menu here, and I'm going to go choose Restart Nopix, Nopix Desktop. So here's the exciting things. Chose. Chose. Chose restart. Not all translations are perfect. So we've got four <laughs> different options. You'll see that we are defaulted to Lars WM. We can go to LXDE. We can go to KDE. Or we can go GNOME 3. I haven't tried GNOME 3. I might be interested to know how it runs. LXDE, of course, is cool. KDE is great. Let's try KDE just because I know that it's going to run very, very well and... and Look at that. That's sleek, eh? Are you sure you want to restart your X server now? Yeah. Let's do it. Why not? Can I ask you for a I password can... again, I hope? No, because we're not restarting everything. We're just oh. restarting X. Okay. But you'll see that now it's actually loading into KDE. I and mean, I didn't have to install anything. It's all built into this thing that I downloaded off of oh, Nopix.org. Oh, spaceship. Yeah. Rocket. And Look at that. And carrying a space probe to Mars. Cool. So here we go into KDE. Come on, bad boy, KDE. This is going to give us a bit more of a, a quote-unquote beautiful environment. It's more attractive, cosmetically pleasing. What are you doing? There it goes. There it goes. You're lucky I didn't bring the nano dots back. Yeah. <laughs> I forbid them. <laughs> Their magnets are a scary thing to me around computer stuff. <laughs> so there's Nopix running under KDE. And uh, you'll find, that if you look at the release notes for, uh, for Nopix 7.0.4, everything is fairly recent as well. So this is a more familiar interface, I think, for you know, people who, who use 
um, for example, Microsoft Windows 7. There you have it. So it's a bit more of a start menu kind of thing. Should we try it? Oh, let's live it up. Okay, so that's that's what it looks like with KDE. It works. It's out of the box. We've just done a really quick install, and it, it works. Great. Looks pretty. Let's try GNOME. I just want to know. Sometimes a guy just wants to feel pretty. Oh. What? You just deleted some. No. No, I just changed. Oh, okay. Oh, it's, it's making some changes to the system here. I don't know if I can switch to, uh, to GNOME or not. Let's see. Do I want to? Yeah. Let's see. <coughs> Out of the box, if Nopix is able to do this for us. Here it goes. So again, we're looking at Nopix version 7, and uh, it's freely available at Nopix.org. That's spelled K-N-O-P-P-I-X dot org. We're looking at the DVD version, which includes all of these great desktops. So we're loading it into GNOME 3 now at this point just to see if it will run under this virtual machine that we've created in that short amount of time. <coughs> Got a smile on his face. Wow. It's loading. Slowly but surely. There it comes. Oh, no. Look at that. See, this is what I figured. You ruined it, lad. What's with GNOME 3? See, I like GNOME 2. Can't there you recover, go. Please. That is so Mac right there. But we did see that, uh, of course, out of the box, it's perfectly able to handle KDE straight out of the box. Worked really, really well. Um, GNOME 3 may be iffy, but that's okay. So check it out. It is an, an amazing uh, way for you to try out uh, Linux. Uh, just something fun for, for people who have used Linux for a while. And uh, also, of course, a great recovery system as well but I would suggest you stay away from GNOME 3 for the moment. I'm staying yeah. away. All right. Yeah. I'm thinking of staying away from Cat 5 for a while. Oh. oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah? We treat you pretty good. Thanks for joining us tonight, everybody. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. Our website is Category5.tv. And I'm the co-host, Eric Kidd. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, Category 5 is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. And the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Thanks, Aaron. Hey, you are welcome. Well, that is practically all the time that we have. That's just about it, huh? That is it. Everybody, it's been nice having you here. Fantastic having you here. Appreciate it. And uh, we hope that uh, you'll join us again next week. Next week, indeed... Sasha is going to be joining us here on the show. You've met Sasha. She's I've a wonderful girl. I've known Sasha for several years. She's a yeah. wonderful young lady. So you guys are going to love her. Nice. Um, we're going to enjoy having her as a part of the Category 5 crew. And, of course, uh, you can join us next week. I checked the calendar. It is there on our website, <laughs> cat5.tv slash calendar. I to her. She said she's just messing with you. Yeah? Yeah. She probably put it in there and, and then... Uh, probably not showing up. No? No. Yeah. I said she's got better things. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Most Tuesdays, I mean, you, 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 you surprise me sometimes. Yeah. You, you got here. I got, yeah. Thanks for coming. I was early. He was early this week. I was week. here like 6.35 I or something. appreciated that, yeah. Chat room is so good to see you. Uh, looks like we've got Rachel joining us in the chat room tonight as well. Hello, Rachel. Nice to see you. <laughs> and I don't know if I said hi to I means it. Rachel wants you hello. to make her a new computer. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. Yes, I'll just whip that out of my keyboard with an Atom 1.8 processor. I think you should do that. That'd be all right. That would be kind of nice family kind of thing yeah. to do. You should do it. Build her a new computer. Yep. All right. All right. We'll, we'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Set it up all in Mandarin. There you go. <laughs> I hope you have a fantastic week. Really looking forward to next week, and uh, I'm hoping that we're going to get the brick wall up soon. That's going to be <laughs> We've run that's into be a brick awesome. wall, folks. We run into a brick wall with the brick wall. Yep. But uh, we'll talk to you next Tuesday night. Eric, it's always nice having you here. Hey, it's great to Thanks, be here. Buddy. And I see we've got some boxes to unpack. It's yeah. going to be like Christmas. A little, little bit of work yet. Reaching. Hey, look, looking I'm around. <laughs> and he, you were mentioning when you first came in that this is kind of weird. And I mentioned that on last week's well, show. Well, the floor does seem to 
it just it's move away from the desk yeah, it's kind of like that it's very slippery when you got wheels yeah so we gotta put something under the desk because it is scratching the wood i was thinking a little beer cooler yeah that too oh that doesn't help the chairs that wouldn't help well we can no. t- tie it off <laughs> <laughs> Invincible Mutant, great to see you in the chat room as well. Thank you so much for your kind comments as well. Uh, Follow us on Twitter, Category 5 TV. And I certainly look forward to seeing you next week. And, uh, yeah, good times. Uh, Thanks, Eric. Say hi to Sasha for me. See you, folks. See you. Thanks for being here. Have a good one.